Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, look, it's the new one. You probably can't even tell from here. Got the umbrella to fit. That was the thing in last week's video. Got a new umbrella, but the pole was too big. Made a cut in there and put it over an old pole. Had to remove some things, a little bit of tinkering, but it's on there and it works and it's not broken. And this one is fixed. Don't pretend it's not messy over here. Stop judging me. This will all be better in several weeks. This is gonna go to a new home. Tiki bar is gonna get dismantled. A lot of it's gonna get thrown away. I'm gonna try and save some pieces because bamboo is hard to find and expensive. And I always feel like I can create, this is why I end up with too many things So, because I have to keep all the broken things. You get it. This will be gone. There'll be furniture, maybe a pergola. Things will be happening, but this umbrella, it had a broken spot on it. So one of these poles that was up here was hanging down all funky and now it's got a little brace in there so that's holding it up and seems to be doing the trick it's probably not the best idea to have things hanging from it but it's fine all these things used to on the tiki bar but that thing's not going to hold it that tiki bar is like any day now it's going to topple over oh, i didn't even like jump in with an introduction which is going right for it apparently i wanted to start things off with looking at these caladium bulbs my last video was about a bunch of caladiums that I've gotten in the mail and that I was planning on planting this year. And I mentioned that I had ordered a few more, uh, one of those being the Forda Beauty. I ordered three of these and I did want to make sure to show them because I linked the seller down in the description of that video and felt a little bit iffy about doing that just because it's like, well, I don't know what they're going to be like. I don't usually like to recommend something if I can't vouch for it, but they came and they look really nice. I only opened up one of them ordered three clumps of the jumbo size bulbs and there's two in here there actually might be three eyes on that one and i would assume the others i don't know why they wouldn't look just as nice we can pop this open and have a look see how these are looking too what's in bag number two looks like another clump of at least two that'll grow from there and this one feels the same okay this one's apparently got some more dirty stuff inside of it so just reach in there Pull that one out so dumping it all over the place. Yeah, look at that. A nice big healthy clump of bulbs. Tubers, really. There's one, two, three, four. At least four eyes on there. So that's gonna be a nice big healthy looking stand of pretty caladiums. These are the Florida Beauty, which usually have a nice green solid color to them. They're uh, solid, it's not really the way to describe it. They're green with usually pinkish red freckling sometimes some whites mixed in there it's a classic kind of caladium usually have nice big bold foliage i'm excited about planting these are one of my favorite caladiums as far as appearance goes not one of my favorites as far as their overall growth habits not always the most vigorous in my experience but once they get going they're great awesome caladiums so that was from my plant obsessions on etsy i linked it in the bottom of the caladium video and i'll, I'll re relink it here too and then i also got some other awesome rhizomes in the mail that i can show you i was planted some of them already and then i held off on the others so that i could show them these are from horn canna farm you can get these off of amazon or you can go to their website they might sell them other places but these are banana cannas you know mine didn't come back last year we had a horrible winter and uh nothing absolutely nothing survived but look at the size of this this is a huge huge clump which is what i would expect from a banana canna or cannas in general, back in the day when you'd order canna rhizomes, they were usually pretty big, not quite this big, but pretty big. You can get giant boxes of them for just a few bucks on the internet, but yeah, things are different now. Things cost more than nurseries around here. Not all of them, but I've seen several where they have cannas pre-potted in like a six inch squat sort of pot. They're charging 40 bucks for them. They're like a foot tall. What is that about? And they're not like anything special. They're just the Tropicanas or Phasians, whatever. You want to call them Durbans and Pretorias and like red scarlets. These are the banana cannas. They'll get nice and big. I planted three of them already. Like I just mentioned, I held off on those so y'all could see them. Weren't the cheapest, but I mean, look at how big they are. There's three in here. I already planted the other three. And I did a bunch of other planting already that we can talk about later in the video. I just wanted to go over the stuff that came in the mail. I have three of them planted back up in my garden window. Looks like two of them are already popping up. So there's one right there. Can you even see it? Do I need to get closer better? You see it? One right here, it's still sleeping. And then another one over here with a leaf coming up. Banana candles will get nice and big. I almost just tripped. Should get, I would say, at least six to eight feet tall their first year. They can get even bigger than that, but they have a really pretty 
bronzy reddish foliage that has lots of stripes in it and some green. I think that's going to look really pretty through this window, especially when the gingers are in flower. Be a lot of pretty contrast there. Then the others are going to go back down over there where the other ones were, but I'll have to lift those during the winter because it's pretty cold down here. This is a really warm spot in the garden. So warm that things do tend to cook at certain times of the year, but that'll get better as the angle of the sun changes as the seasons change over. But at the very least, I wanted one planted in this corner back here because like I said, it's nice and toasty. So I won't have to worry about that one. I don't usually have issues with cannas coming back. 6A, 6B right on the line, usually with enough mulch, they'll come back. But I mean, we were frozen solid below 10 degrees Fahrenheit for what? two and a half weeks in February. It was just a bad winter. So I'm not shocked that those didn't come up. And then I also planted three, uh, no, nine Stuttgart, 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 the green and white variegated cannas back here behind everything. I used to have tropic cannas here. They didn't come back. So I did those instead because I think that they will do better in this location, particularly because the variegated canna that the Stuttgart with that white variegation, when I've grown them before, if they get a ton of sun, they do tend to scorch. Sometimes things like Epsom salts can help with that, but I think this would be a better spot for it because they'll it'll get sun, but it'll still be somewhat shaded. So hopefully they'll be okay there. In fact, it actually might be so dark over here. I, they may not even get going. If I don't see any activity, blah, blah. <laughs> if I don't see any activity out of them in a week or two, I'm gonna pull them and move them someplace with more sun because it's pretty shady down low. They'll get enough light up high, but getting them going, they're going to need the sun to come down there. And I don't think. I didn't think I see anything coming up. Maybe a little bit of green might be poking up, but not much. It's only been a few days though. I need to return to the shade. The camera's getting hot to touch. It's finally getting nice and toasty out. I haven't done much else out here because you know, the back situation I talked about last week, today's the first day pain-free. So I'm still gonna take it easy for a few days. I would like to just jump right back into it, but uh, I know better than that. And I know myself well enough that I'm like zero to a hundred and they're gonna take it easy or just go full fledged. So I have some things laid out that I laid out, I think in last week's video that maybe can get those planted. Might do a couple of planters over here. We will see and maybe some over there by the house. I wanna start getting the annuals all plugged in, things that should have been done a couple weeks ago. So that's all that's going on here. Don't have a ton of stuff to do in this video. Cause like I said, just trying to dial it back just for like maybe four or five more days and then can really get back into things and start going nuts with all the plants and everything. The humidity right now is growing and it's getting kind of sticky. So maybe we'll resume in the morning because um, it's it's really hot <laughs> and I like the heat, but not necessarily when like I have a face full of biting gnats and mosquitoes and whatnot. Morning's just a more pleasant time to garden. We'll see, I don't know. Really, I've just been having fun walking around talking about plants, but there's work to be done. There goes the baby, such a good sweet Toby. It's several hours later, sun has moved out of the way, a little bit cooler outside. Remember just a couple weeks ago when I was like, oh, it's cold, but just wait a couple weeks, he'll be like, ugh, it's too hot. It's the joys of being outside, I love it. I need to get these pool planters potted up. Traditionally, I put my Adenidia palms in here or some sort of palm. Last year was the Adenidias, prior to that, I think I had queen palms in there. And uh, I don't really want to move the Adenidias off my front porch. They've been there doing some recovering because, you know, they had the spider mites and then there was some frost and then like I may or may not have dropped one of them when I was moving outside and done some damage to one of the trunks. Just little things like that. I think their best bet at recovering and looking nice is going to be staying on the front porch where they're protected from a lot of wind. They'll get morning sun, a little bit of afternoon, and then not having them planted up with lots of annuals, which is what would be the case if they were planted in these. I'd have this like just full of petunias and who knows what else. Those are all plants that are gonna suck the nutrients away from the plant and I, d I don't want that for them. So what I was thinking, this is a difficult decision to make because you know, I would love to have the palm trees over here, but I've never just planted these great big blue pots up with just fun like tropicals and annuals. That could be nice. That might be fun. These go on the front porch. They've just been hanging out here while the Ed and Idiots were there, but I'll do some rearranging so that I can get these moved back over to that area. That'll still wait a few more days for the back to start feeling better. But with these, I, don't know, I might go ahead and uh, fill them up with soil and then just take the night to think about it and see what I've come up with for the morning time. I know I'd probably want some elephant ears, maybe some heliconias in them. Still do all the plants that I purchased to put around the Ed and Idiots just without those palm trees in the middle. 
What do we think? Hopefully everyone's on board because they can't do anything. I won't know till after this is done. I do have two of these pretty big white bird of paradise that would fit in those pots. And I thought about putting those into those containers. Like that would look really cool. But the thing with the bird of paradise, the way their leaves arch over, when you're coming to the steps, you're just be getting smacked in the face by leaves. And I, this is a really exposed spot. When it's really windy out here, summer storms and whatnot, they just get shredded. So that probably won't work. I thought about maybe doing bananas because I have plenty of bananas, just like pups that I can dig up from the clumps around here. Red insets would look awesome, but I haven't really seen those for sale this year. I did see a couple at a nursery. They were in like six inch containers and they're like $45. That's the nature of things these days, apparently. So that's not going to happen. I wouldn't want to plant those tiny little bananas in those pots anyways, but that would look awesome. The big red thick trunked bananas new side of the steps, but it would be the same thing. They would hang out and you'd get smacked in the face by those leaves. That might be kind of annoying. Um, the banana pups that I need to dig up aren't really tiny little pups anymore either. These were coming up in the springtime, both of these right here. And I was like, oh, I need to move these because they're starting to move over here into this drainage ditch. And that, that shouldn't be like that. So at the very least, I need to dig up this one and I can move it or just toss it and probably this one too. So I mean, that could be an option I could toss a banana in each one of those but it's going to be the same thing for a little while until they're tall enough to go over the head they're gonna <laughs> be smacking people in the face maybe that's just gonna have to be the way it is it'll be like hey you want to swim gotta take a leaf to the face yeah i don't know just walking around talking because that's what i'm best at right now and trying to come up with plans sometimes when you say it out loud and those things can be a little bit easier to plan them out but it's essentially going to be what i was planning to do here regardless just without the triple trunked Christmas palms in the middle. Yeah, it's gonna be weird, you know? That's gonna be a big change. I've always done the same thing with these pots. I'm still essentially gonna be doing the same thing just without a palm tree in the middle. And I think that the reason I'm leading this direction is because I think that it will be nice to not have something that really obstructs the view quite as much right here. Cause with those Adenidia palms, when those are in these pots or pretty much anything else I've had in them that was larger, it does make it more difficult. It breaks things up. So you can't really see through and see the other palm trees on the other end. And really you don't get as much of a view of the garden and what's going on out here. So having something that stays more on the shorter side over here, I think that might be nice. I don't know, I'm gonna sleep on it. We'll pick up in the morning and see what I've come up with, if anything at all, who knows. Someone's been swimming. Cause it's hot, right Toby? Do you wanna acknowledge me? Yes, it's very hot. Got up bright and early. Not bright and early, okay. Maybe it was like 8 a.m. Slept a little bit late, but <laughs> I did that thinking, oh, okay, it'll be nice and cool. Get a bunch of stuff done. Um, nope, it was already like 89 degrees when I woke up, which is great. Summer's kicking in, but not the most productive for getting things done. And I ran out of potting mix. So I went to the store. Hey, was looking for that. Thank you, put that in my pocket. Went out, got some more potting mix, put that in here. This is a blend of old, just all purpose potting mix. I'm trying to work my way through. Coconut mix, and then there's earthworm castings, biotone starter, some sea kelp, oh, and compost. And I did make one big mistake here. I usually prefer to add my earthworm castings last because I don't know if you've ever noticed if you use them before, when you water your soil and the earthworm castings tend to just flush right out of the pot. Usually what I prefer to do is get all my stuff together, except for the earthworm castings, moisten the soil somewhat, then add those earthworm castings and then get to planting. So I wasted a whole bunch there, but this is a really deep pot. So hopefully that won't be a problem. I'm gonna blend these together, pre-moisten them. So I got both of them about ready to go and then get to planting. I'm gonna start with this pot because I can already tell that I overfilled that other one quite a bit. So I need to get a bucket, move some of that soil. And I think, geez, wow, the pot's hot. I think I probably overfilled this one too. Happens sometimes. This, I forgot how many large things I wanted to put in here. Is my mic on? I didn't even check. Do we have mic levels going? Good. In the center of both of these, I'm doing a Heliconia. This is Heliconia Hirsuta Costa Flores. We can, Maybe I should just go ahead and plant these and talk about what's in them when I'm done planting them up. Would that make more sense? And lift that up. Lots of maple tree saplings I need to pull out of here. Try and get that up high enough. There we go. I've already done it. My eyes are always so much bigger than my planters, but 
It's the nice thing about working with annuals is that, well, annuals and tropicals is you can tend to squeeze them in fairly tightly. I'm gonna have to go loosen the root ball on this one though. There we go. So I had a pot that had four of these cordolins in them. So I'm gonna put those around this pot. I was thinking about maybe keeping them all together, but I think it would also look nice to split them apart, although they're not the same size. Each one's slightly larger than the other. Hmm. So I can always just do two on one side and then two on the other. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical, especially because once I get the other annuals in here, that's gonna fill in gaps and things will start to look more even over the next few weeks. You're gonna be a problem? Yeah, you are. Soil moved around, dig out a nice hole here to make one of my other favorite plants fit in here. There we go. Oh, so green and shiny. Okay, now I just need to, well, tidy it up. The heliconia needs a lot of dead stuff cut out of it. Need to pull the cord one for the cuss up. Oh, and I need all the petunias. They're on the front porch, I forgot. I moved all the petunias to the front porch. And camera's about to overheat. Hanging in there, Toby? Yeah, it got hot, didn't it? It got so hot, even the tortoise started pacing in front of the door. It was like, let me inside. Uh, I finished. The camera kept overheating, so I just went ahead and did it and figured I'd wait for the sun to get out of the way where things cool off a little bit. <laughs> go outside and go outside. We can go outside and have a look. Hey, fish. How y'all doing? Anybody seen Pumpkin? Nobody knows where Pumpkin is. She's around here somewhere. Oh, there she is. Good morning. You having a good nap, Pumpkin? You have a good nap, baby girl. I realized I hadn't shown her yet, and everybody always likes to get a little bit of pumpkin in their Such a sweetheart. I love you, pumpkin. All your kisses? Thanks, pumpkin. He's so sweet. <laughs> she looks so sleepy. Okay, back out the plants outdoors. Ah, I have to wait for the lens to defog a little bit. This is, it is weird for me. I'm used to always having palm trees in these pots, but I don't hate it. Also, I need to stop talking. I know I'm going to keep talking with this fogged up lens and then I'm going to regret it. How's that? The fog gone? Looks like the fog's gone. Can I help you? Get off me, Toby. What I ended up doing here, you saw the bulk of it when I started this planter right here. Heliconia hirsuta in the middle. This is a form of heliconia that usually gets a decent amount of height on it. Normally when I grow these, they'll get at least three feet tall. Oftentimes they'll push about four and a half feet tall. They have more of a reed-like growth habit to them or even something you'd see similar to a lot of gingers. They'll come up and up and up. And they have really pretty red, orangish, and green waxy colored flower heads on them. They look gorgeous. Hummingbirds love them. Very tropical looking. So that'll come up nice and tall out of the center. Cordelin fruticosa kiwi on each side here. These are some of my favorites because they look like rainbows. The only concern I have with these being here is that they might get too much sun. I've planted them in these pots before. I did it last year, but they had some shade from having the canopy of the palms above them. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. And then the Maui Gold, Colocasias. See what's going on here? These are like a bunch of my favorite plants. Let's talk about Heliconias, the Cordon Protocosa Kiwi, the Maui Gold Colocasias, all front and center here. These will get nice, big, shiny, light green leaves on them, very reflective. The sun might be intense here in the spot for them so i'm gonna to have to keep an eye on that but they got a lot of sun last year some of the ones that i planted so they should be all right and then down below i did three supertunia vista fuchsias there's these right here one here another one over there and another one on the other side of the pot the vista fuchsias get really big nice big pinky magenta well, well fuchsia how about that fuchsia flowers on them last year i did the supertunia vista paradise in these which is very similar to this but the flower has a little bit more of a red <laughs> a red tinge to it sorry i'm blowing bugs away from my face i think that i like the fuchsia better the paradise i wasn't totally thrilled with the color on it it grew wonderfully but it just, the color wasn't really for me supertunia honey not a vista all of the honeys, when I went to unpot them to put them in, they, like, almost the entire plant started to come up from the roots. So I had to be really careful with potting up the rest of them. The first one was where I learned that they weren't rooted into their containers very well. After that, I was more careful. So there's a honey on each side here. Just two of them. Normally they have more of an orangish yellow color flower on them. Right now they're very yellow. They were getting a good amount of shade, though, where I had them. That's probably all that is. I bet some time out in the sun. Those will color up nicely and then super tunia vista silverberry there's one on each side of the container so there's one right here 
that I made sure to put another one on this side. Those are the only petunias that I put in these pots where I really cared about where I put them. The others, I just mix them together. So on each side of the steps, there's a silverberry. The reason I do that is because they have a white, white-ish flower on them, which reflects light very nicely. So I'm gonna want that to pick up the colors from the pool lights at nighttime. It looks so pretty when they do that. I did that last year and it was gorgeous. So that's why those are what I decided I wanted to be the main focus on each side of the steps on the inside. And the same on the outside. So there's one on the outside that'll catch the light from the light that's back here, the landscape light. And the same with the one that I put on this edge of the pot, it's gonna pick up the light from the lighting on the side of the house. So that will help just brighten things up at nighttime. And then there are three Supertunia Bordeaux in each one, those beautiful purple flowers. They're so pretty. Bordeaux is usually a pretty good grower. I say aggressive, but it should be able to hold its own with the vistas all right. The honey, I don't know, we'll see. I did something pretty much identical to this last year, except I used just a blue wave petunia. They ended up fizzling out when it got too hot outside, so I wanted to make sure to go with the super tunia because they usually have pretty good heat tolerance. And the same with the honeys. They did well until like mid-September, and then they just kind of fizzled away. But everything else did okay. I think that this is gonna look great. Oh, the other thing, I said the only thing was that I was worried about the cordolins. Maybe might get a little bit too much sun. Gonna have to watch them. Same with the color caseas, but I think they'll be okay. The Heliconia hirsuta, what's going on here? What's that? Ew. The hirsuta, I've grown them in full sun before and they were okay, but I still am gonna have to be really careful because there's a lot of pavement here. Like I was, the reason I got so hot today, I'm pretty sure is because I was surrounded by hot pavement. When I was out running errands, I felt totally fine. I got home and I was like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's too hot. I felt like I was frying. But then I also, when I went inside, looked at my Wi-Fi thermometer and it was 97 degrees. So that probably has something to do with it too. I thought it was only like 89 or 90 because they said the high was 91, but they were just very wrong about that. So these colocaceas here, these will get pretty big. They'll come up fairly high and frame things out. And when that happens, it may make the cordolins a little bit invisible. If that happens, I can just lift these right out. They lift and transplant so easily. I'm not really concerned about that at all. That shouldn't be a problem. The, but I'm not gonna want them to get so big that they'll choke out the heliconias. The colocaceas are gonna grow way faster than those heliconias. Those heliconias will probably sit still for maybe a week or two until they start to take off. But the hirsutas, they're pretty reliable as far as heliconias go. And I also have the andromedas over here, which none of them have nice looking flowers on them right now, but you can see they have a very different form and shape to them and how they grow. I think that these would have looked beautiful in that container, in both those containers on each side of the steps. But one, I think they would have fried in that spot. These never do as well for me when they get tons and tons and tons of sun, at least not with the pavement around them. And they're not as likely to stretch out high enough to be able to show off their flowers. So that, that was the reason I went with the hirsutas over these Andromedas is I figure the hirsutas they can get that height and they can get it quickly to be able to stick up from the middle and everything. And then I was gonna plant up this whole little spot here and I just, it was, I w it was too warm. I had to go inside. I was like, I'm done. I filled in the rest of this with potting soil, gave it a water, just like, no, went inside, took a shower and cooled off. But this is the lantana tree. My plan was to fill this up with lots of other pretty flowers, like I said another time. It's supposed to cool off in a couple days, so I was like, why don't I just just hold off? My main objective, though, was to get this planted because this lantana tree, it was in that little 10-inch container, and it was a real struggle keeping it hydrated in that little 10-inch container. I knew that I wanted this right here. I like it in that square planter because I'm going to fill that with lots of other flowers and things down below it, but I like that there, one, just because it's pretty. I love lantana, and the pollinators enjoy them, too. But I also have all this, one of the windmill palms in the way now, but I have all this lantana right here. So that's gonna carry through and then it'll have the lantana tree that's behind the, it's behind the windmill palm. Y'all just saw it. It's over there, see it? I'll get both of these windmill palms moved to the front porch here in a few days. I'm still, you know, gonna take it a little easy. Don't wanna stress the back out any more than I need to. And the drip that's in here will be going onto this pot right here. I have another drip line that'll go up inside this one. So those will stay very, very, very well watered. I also got this gomfrina planted. This was in last week's video in the plant hall. This is the Kiss Red QIS. I don't know if it's Kiss, Kiss, something like that. It is so pretty. I think I'm really gonna like having that there. And then I did the Orange Sensation Salvia here in the front. It's seen better days. It, I think it's gonna take it a minute to adjust to the sun. By day three of having it in the ground, the leaves were starting to scorch 
but they're filling out and flushing out with tons and tons and tons of new buds. And I intentionally left my pots out here so that I could make sure I recounted everything back to the vlog that I did out here because I did a fair amount of planting, like a pretty considerable amount of planting <laughs> without the camera. It was just too hot. I, just, I need to remember that this new lens I have makes the camera heat up a lot faster. So I did another one of the Rolias back there, a Much a Murado, a Crinum Lily. I think I already told everybody about the Stuttgart Cannas in the background. Right here, two black coral colocasias. I love them. They're so pretty, and I think that those are going to be perfect in this spot. The black can be, it's kind of a difficult color to do much landscaping with, but the colocasia, for some reason, anytime I've grown these, they've never stood out to me in a way that was, like, gaudy. You know, they always looked nice. They add an element that contrasts very nicely to the particularly the colors I'm using, oranges, pinks, purples. Having that black there helps highlight all the stuff that's in front and does help provide a little bit of a line and bring out the fact that there are these sable palms right here so things don't just disappear. It pulls the eye in and at the same time lets other things stand out and shine on their own. And I put all these gnats. I put another lantana right here because I had, remember, I ran short so it stopped right there. So I finished off that row got those planted through look at them they're finally starting to flower i planted those a while ago but it just wasn't really very warm and so they weren't doing much but now here we are nice and crispy outside and they seem to like it the oleander not so much i think i need to find a new spot for this one that sun i mean it's just cooking it and it's an oleander they can take a lot of sun but i already told you all the way the light hits the house and then bounces back down into the pool there's just like a little sun triangle of death that can cook things this time of year so i'll go ahead and move that well no i won't i can't pick that up not right now i'll have somebody else move it or it's just it's gonna have to hang on it's not gonna die i'll up the irrigation on it and we're finally supposed to be getting some rain they said it was going to rain like off and on all week and then it it did not i saw it rain at my neighbor's house i was watering plants and just watched a really pretty decent sized curtain of rain come down and just move on through and i was like hey we get some of that, please? Not complaining, we've had enough rain, but it's a little bit weird that it's June and we're not like drenched all the time. Usually where I live, there's a decent amount of rain showers throughout the this month. Anyways, that's enough of that. A lot of things are in drip, so I don't really have to worry about it too much. I have two dragon's wing begonias in here that I put Super Tunia Vista bubble gums in around. These are around the base of the queen palm. So I did both of them, this one right here and that one right over here. I was apprehensive about doing the dragon's wing begonias in here. Oh, the drip's running. Isn't that fun? Get a little look at those fun sprinklers down there. The dragon's wings, I see them planted. Oh, my voice just cracked. I see them planted fairly frequently, especially downtown, like getting tons and tons and tons of just baking sun. When I've done that before, though, it hasn't always worked out great for them. Usually I like for them to get a lot of morning light and then filtered light in the afternoon, which this one right here will get. This one, even though it's only like, uh, it's probably 12, 10, 12 feet away from the other one, the spot gets a lot more sun. But they're up on drip. That can make a really big difference sometimes as far as sun tolerance goes. If it looks like they start to get too crispy, I can just pull them out, move them to a shadier spot. Not the end of the world. Although I mean, we've had plenty of heat. They're looking okay. Their leaves are somewhat cupped but they aren't showing any signs of like photo oxidation or sunburn, leaf scorch. And if at 97 degrees, they're still looking like this, they should, I would imagine they'll be okay all summer, right? I don't think so. You can go in, you wanna go swim? Go swim, Toby, get in. Hi, yes, hello. You wanna, you're staring at that water. Get in, Toby, come on, go on. You're perfect just how you are, Toby. He's already been in there twice today, he's okay. And it's cooled down significant, I mean, I think it's still like 94. But when the sun's not on you, it just, it doesn't feel that bad. The humidity is only, I think, 77%, which is pretty great for this time of year. Doesn't feel as bad when the humidity is below 80. Look how well this fuchsia is doing. I, I would just normally think that this would be totally dead, sitting on the pavement, getting afternoon sun. But I think the banana, just that one leaf, it's right there. I think that that's just enough for it. And I noticed that my sprinklers, my like garden irrigation, they're hitting it. So it's getting a good amount of water that should be helping. A little bit of crispiness to it, but I think it's had that for a while. <laughs> the flowers are kind of bleaching out on it. Don't know if I've seen them do that before. But the foliage, I mean, it's looking pretty good. It is different from what I'm used to, but I like it. As I mentioned before, I think I mentioned before, 
I was also into the idea of having things that weren't quite going to be as large and obstructive to the view, having it so we can still see all the palm trees back there and just having things more open than they usually are over here. I want to fill in all the gaps everywhere where the fence is, but as far as actually back here in the yard, eh, I don't think it's necessary. These will get scooched closer to the edge of the pool. I made a bit of a mess when I was planting these, particularly this one. Uh, I just, it was, it just got so hot. I was too hot. I'm blaming everything on the heat. No, I was being sloppy and just soil was spilling all over the place. So that's wet. When it dries, I'll sweep it and get that cleaned up and then position these so that they're more even on each side of the stairs there. I didn't get to this, but it's fine. Screw it. I do that in the morning or something when it's not so warm outside. The only other thing that I did that I didn't film was I gave this hibiscus here a really heavy cutback. A nice big prune. I need to get in here and get this string out. If you've been following the channel since last summer, you may remember when I left a spool of string out here and then the chipmunks and birds worked together and just unraveled the entire string. We <laughs> got it all through this tree and with all the stuff that was going on last year, I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to leave it. But I think it would be best to go ahead and get that out of there now because it, it just doesn't look nice. We're getting long and lanky. Needed a good prune. This is going to encourage it to flush out with lots of growth from the inside, have more tips on it, and should have better flowers. We will see. Hey, yeah, but that's it. That's everything. I know it wasn't a lot. I mean, it felt like a lot. But these two, there's 30 plants between these two containers or 28 between the two of them. So that's a lot of stuff planted. And then there's just a lot of stuff I did off camera because I was just moving at such a slow pace with the back situation that I didn't think it was worthy of filming. And when I add to an area and it's not a whole new thing, I don't know if it's necessary to film all that, right? Yeah. No, probably not. So there we are. Next week should be more productive. We will see. Don't know. Not in a rush. Oh, the only thing I didn't put in these containers, I've started to talk about this like three times <laughs> since I've been giving this update and kept forgetting. I have some of these double up pink begonias here, which are awesome little begonias. Says they get eight to 18 inches high and they are sun to shade. I thought these might be a good option for these containers, possibly even in place of those cordolins of the fruticuses that are in there. Should I decide to pull those out, then I may go ahead and switch to having these in their place. Just, they're fun. They're fun little plants, shiny leaves, pink flowers on them. They can take that light and they'll be okay in those spots. Ideally, what I really wanted to do, I, I love what I did. So don't get me wrong, I'm not being ungrateful but I would have loved to have also underplanted this with a lot of vinca. I just, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen it around. If I were to have found the vinca, then I would plug that in. And if I come across it the next like two weeks or so before things have started to form too many roots in there, I'll go ahead and grab some and pop those in there because I just, I think that vinca has such a fun, cheery, happy shape to it. They'll be tolerant of the sun. They're easy, low maintenance, low fuss, and just cute. I think it would be a nice addition to these planters because there are a lot of flowers down low and then all foliage up top until those heliconias start blooming, which might be a few weeks. I have actually made a pretty big dent on all the stuff that needs to be done over here, which is great. It's exciting. Tropicals are going to start to feel that heat, start to take off and move and get big. Can't wait. So exciting. Keep checking back here because earlier today, this morning, there was a deer right on the side of this fence that stalked me for like an hour, just stared right at me and then Toby was out here and Toby went up and just sniffed it. It was probably eight feet away from him on the other side of the fence. And he was like, okay, I don't really know what that is. And he went laid down. Deer didn't seem concerned with him, but that so freaks me out. They can jump these big fences. I don't, I'd have trouble landing because there's only like four and a half feet between the fence and then this wall, but they can get aggressive. I'm not used to deer. Do y'all live in places where you have a lot of deer? This is new. The, it's just, it's finally getting more woodsy here. This is an area where the trees were really small and they finally started to get big and some more wildlife is moving in, which is fun. I'm okay with it, but I just, I'm not used to that. Deer kind of, they sort of terrify me. I love animals, but deer, that one thing for it to, you just, you don't really know what's going on in their heads and they can snap and then just kill you. It's one of those things. All right, that might be a bit dramatic. I know being a little bit irrash, uh, being a little bit irrational there, but it really was, it was just like, following me and it did the thing where it stomped its foot and snorted at me and I was like what's your problem dear I don't even know you I'm just out here doing my thing eventually it wandered down a little ways and laid down in the grass and I was like oh well that's cute it just laid there its little head sticking up above 
all this stuff and stared over here from far away. The deer are actually the reason that I didn't plant impatiens in my front yard this year or last year. I used to fill my front yard up with tons of impatiens and then uh, it was summer of 2019. I believe that the deer just devoured them. And I was like, well, this is, this is new. Never had to deal with that before. So I may try something different this year other than impatience, maybe petunias. A lot of neighbors were planting petunias and begonias in lieu of impatience for the deer. What do y'all do for deer? Recommend some deer safe plants. People ask me about them and I'm like, I don't know. It's not something I've ever had to deal with until now in my front yard. They don't come back here. They'd have to really, really, really want to jump that fence to come back here. I don't know why they would go to that kind of effort when there's so much space for them to roam out here, but it could happen. Never know. They better not mess with my dog. I'll leave my dog alone. Yeah, Freckles looks like did okay with the heat today. I gotta go. It's too hot. Camera's gonna overheat again. Again, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below and say hi. Love talking to everybody. What y'all got going on in your garden? Again, give me some tips with the deer. Fun plants that you guys use with them that they don't devour. Appreciate the tips. Thank you. All right, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.